The news that I've got is that we're changing our power source. We're no longer fabricating our gas turbine out of a turbo. Um, the reason for it is that I've been fortunate enough and I've been able to pick up a proper gas turbine. Come have a look, I'll show you. So here it is in all its miniature glory. This is a little gas turbine designed to fly a remote control aircraft um, or jet um, aircraft and it's a little gas turbine that apparently has L or butane start and runs off kerosene or diesel and it has a little uh, a little ECU here and a digital display here that gives you all the data and the history of this little engine is unknown I have never seen it run and the previous owner has witnessed it running but has had it stored for nine years. So I bought it in good faith that it's operational or it's going to operate. Um, and the only thing that I can really do is just hope that I can figure out um, how, how to operate it. I'm pretty sure that a lot of this technology here is probably quite antiquated, you know, like computers and all the other stuff. I guess in nine years, a lot of things go through development. Um, everything appears to be in good condition so the only thing that's left to do is to fabricate some parts and hopefully get it all fitted up into the um, UP gas turbine locomotive and this is going to be a game changer for many many reasons um, one of the biggest reasons it's going to give us a lot more space in the unit than what the previous um, turbo and gas um, combustion chamber was giving us so this is going to make things hopefully a bit more prototypical and I think it will sound really really cool but apart from sounding really cool we want it to be show a bit of functionality so yeah hopefully we'll be able to produce enough gases to turn our power wheel anyway guys the first thing on the agenda is let's build these bogies and get these wheel sets all back together so finally I have reached the point where I have now 12 wheels that have been machined and six axles and I have my hydraulic press. So the next thing to do is put it all together and form the wheel sets. I always get nervous when it comes time to pressing the wheels onto the axles. Uh, I don't know why, I think it's just the understanding of knowing that if you muck up your tolerances then you essentially are going to be getting out the grinder and remachining everything but anyway I have now 12 wheels that are machined six axles it's taken forever to do and reach this point but I'm pretty confident we'll at the end of the day end up with some wheel sets which is what I'm hoping so let's get into it So I machined these tiny little sleeves to be pressed on the end of the axles. I don't know if it's, you can see clearly here, but basically they get pressed on the end of the axles. And the reason I did this was when I went to get the bearings originally, um, they were hideously, hideously expensive. And, you know, when I'm buying this many bearings, and it's only making up a third of the locomotive. I need to try and save money where possible. So what I did was I got a bearing that was cheaper. And in order to make it work uh, into the bogey. And I'll move you guys down a bit. There we go. In order to make this bearing work in the bogey, I machined up these little sleeves to basically go inside here. And... Um, that's not right. Okay, so someone's given me the wrong size bearings. Okay, looks like we're going back to the bearing store. Okay, we now have all our bearings. 
um, our new replacement bearings, the other 11 uh, of the correct size. So this is the roughly an outline of the bogey. It's not, it's, it's prototypically correct, but it's not 100%, but it will do. And essentially what's going to happen is the springs will be put in this position here, but what I'm concerned about is my bearings. So they're, they're the bearing caps and each one of these will pop out and then they're bolted through the side frames. But then I have to press the bearings in here to hold the um, axles in place. So that is the next thing to do is we'll put a little bit of Loctite on these and press all 12 of these bearings into the um, bogey side frames and then we can start assembling our bogeys and seeing what they look like. So I'm pretty excited because um, this whole project has been quite a few months in the making as a lot of you know. So finally we're going to get some progress where we'll actually physically see by the end of this video what this um, what this UP will look like. Alright, so I'm going to get into it and start pressing these bearings. exciting time um, it is an exciting time because now we get to put the bogies under the framework for the very first time on their own wheel sets so um, the next thing to do is get the frame up onto the um, stand that we've just extended because it's quite lengthy that's 1.1.8 meter length in length Ugh, tongue tied it's 1.8 meters in length so I'll throw a picture up and you can have a look and compare it to my height and you can see that it is substantially quite tall um, so yeah so without any ado let's get into it Now I've never tried this before so I have no idea what's going to interfere, what's going to foul, but um, yeah we're just going to find out all at the same time. I know it's bloody heavy. Roughly where it's going to go. This is the other bolster I haven't welded in place yet, so um, okay. 
you'll already see an issue. With the previous setup, I welded these cradles in, and um, it's now failing this this wheel set here. So that's something I'm going to have to cut out of the frame later on. Um, but let's just get it down on its own weight for the time being. And uh, step back, and you guys can see this before me because I need to step back and have a look at it. So excuse me. Oh, that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited with that. Now, I think there's just one more thing that I should add to just make it look more prototypical. And I think that every single one of you can relate to this. You're certainly going to recognise this shape now. Once I put this on, this shape is very much like what we're looking for. So now we're looking very much like what the Union Pacific gas turbine B unit looked like. We're going to have our turbine up here, intake here, exhaust just like the prototype. We'll have an alternator in here or a generator yet to be decided. Most of you would have noticed that we're missing a wheel set out of the centre. These bogies will be pulled apart later on. I still have to add the springs at the moment. They're just sitting on the actual frames. Um, what I needed to do is find out how much space I had between the frames to add my motors, if I can add motors. So what I've decided to do is use these motors here. I've still got to get another one. They have about a, I think it's a, a nearly a 10 to one uh, gear reduction uh, a reduction gearbox already mounted inside of them so I want to turn around and somehow be able to mount this in here to drive this wheel and hopefully this wheel um, I know it's not ideal like most people will set up a, a bogey a power bogey where it will um, at least have a chain drive between two wheels but you got to remember that this is 2.1 meters in length I've got a a unit which is the head unit which I can then turn around and put my power bogies in that set if needed and just have this unit um, freewheeling with all the generators and batteries associated with it equipped in this unit here but that's yet to be decided by all means if you have a comment or a suggestion um, please comment down below I'm happy to read them all and take everything on board um, I'm happy to listen to constructive cr criticism, <laughs> but uh, otherwise, this is the way that I, the direction I'm heading. Um, so yeah, I think the next thing we just get onto is just keep going. So I've been struggling with this uh, jet engine now for quite a few nights after work and um, I was able to download a very old PDF of how to set everything up because I just can't find any information and I noticed I didn't have an RPM signal and um, I made a little mistake with the wiring so I've now put the sensor in the correct position and I'm now getting an RPM input and it's now cycling um with the design for being inside a, a a jet engine um it's looking for a throttle position from the remote control and it's given me an input anyway long story short <clears throat> i found the by putting a piece of tape right in this position at this position this dial is telling the um the little ECU here that it is ready to start up so now that I've got a piece of tape there I know exactly where to set the dial I'm slowly making some steps forward um, to try and start this thing and um, yeah I've already blown one of my new glow plugs which I've waited two weeks for so um, we're on our last glow plug and fingers crossed we can get somewhere today to starting it up Alright, so I read in the manual that gas is meant to be at about 40%. Um, currently it's sitting at 1%, so maybe that's part of the ignition problem. 
Um, so let's give this another go and see if it will start. I've got some kerosene mixed up with um, some oil. Try and get some lubrication into those bearings. Was a bit excessive. So I'm really happy that is now running. Um, I need to learn a little bit more about this little gas turbine. I'm still not 100% happy with the glow on the outside of the wheels. I think it's running a little bit too hot. So I've decided to um, make the decision of not running it any further without seeking some advice and help from some other people who are more familiar with this particular um, jet engine. So the next thing on the agenda is actually fitting it to the UP because this is what our power unit's going to be. So hopefully we produce enough gas flow to turn the um, power or the power wheel that we've got already fitted into the um, UP. The only thing we need to do is remove that um, nozzle off the end of the uh, gas turbine and we need to machine our own fitting to adapt it to suit a new purpose which is instead of flying an RC aircraft it's going to be powering our UP Pacific which will then turn around and power a generator to a set of batteries and onto our power bogies. What I've done is I've copied this exhaust housing and I've made my own which now mounts up exactly the same as what this one has except for the pipe is a heavy wall pipe and it's designed for flow. This one's designed obviously for thrust with the tapered cone. Um, now it's time to mount it to the pipe work. I'm going to remove it and uh, weld it into position and hopefully everything will fit um, in the space that I've allowed for it to uh, to go. Okay folks, so I'm really excited to show you what I've just done now, but before I do, don't forget to hit that notification button and that's going to notify you of further progress on this project and other projects that I've been doing on my channel. Now, further ado, which I love saying that word, Let's get back into the UP and let's reveal how far I've gotten so far. Here it is. I have done all the sheet metal and how cool does that look? Obviously, I still have a little bit more work to do, but you can see the representation of what we're trying to achieve. And I am really happy. I am very, very happy with how this looks and it's taken a lot of work guys to get this far um, I'm sure a lot of you would appreciate the work and why it's taken so long to have an update but there's a lot of work involved in this and we come around the back oops just tripped over something so that's our exhaust 
I ended up making fabricating a little bracket there to support our pipe. It's not officially welded in place, but here's our gas turbine. That's all mounted up. We've got a massive amount of space here and a massive amount of space there that I'm sure we'll end up filling it up with something. But um, I'll just step back and you can see it from this perspective. It's, it's looking the part. I'm happy with it. Um, by all means, uh, comment below and tell me what you think. I should have got that out of the way, but then again, I'm not a professional. I'm just a novice having fun on YouTube with my channel. As much as I'd love to keep going with this video, guys, we've reached a point where we must say goodbye. And before I do, I'd like to turn around and share with you, we have what's called a community tab. And on the community tab is where I ask for your feedback on certain subjects and questions. So if you see something pop up in that community tab, feel free to answer. And for everyone that has been patiently waiting for an update, I hope that you're satisfied with what you see. And if you haven't already jumped on board, don't forget, hit that notification bell so you get further updates. So till next time, tongue tied again. Till next time guys, please take care. That's me. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm out of here. Bye.